Okay, let's move on to T accounts. Now, just like we did with our basic accounting equation lesson, I have the same data included below for CK Company. And I went ahead and included that pregnant Elsie chart that we reviewed in the debits and credits lessons that we can really quickly just go back and access that throughout today's session. Now, we have T accounts up here and they are called T accounts because they literally are big T's. Now, earlier in our previous lesson for debits and credits, I mentioned that there was a very easy, simple definition for debit and for credit. And that is debits on the left and credits on the right. And this is how they apply for T accounts. All of your debits will be on the left and all of your credits will be on the right. And this proves true for each and every different T account. Now, every account that you have will have its own T account. And depending on what side we put our transaction numbers on, that will kind of show us exactly what's happening. By transaction numbers, I mean the amount of the actual financial change. So let's dive right in and kind of play around with this to see if it makes a little bit more sense, uh, particularly since that last lesson for debits and credits was so vague and just a bunch of memorization. Let's apply it. So on January 1st, Christopher Knowles started CK Company by transferring $50,000 from his personal bank account to a business account. So again, just like we did when we were using the basic accounting equation to analyze these transactions, let's do the same thing. And let's ask ourselves a few different questions. Um, one, what accounts are being affected? So remember, there's going to be two or more accounts that are being affected. Um, for each account is the account, going up or down? And that'll kind of give us some more information. Three, what type of account is that account? And four, would that be a debit or a credit? I remember, we're going to have to go through that twice or maybe even more. In this case, we're just going to have to go through that two times for each individual account that's being affected. So let's start with uh, transferring $50,000. So the company's cash is increasing, just like we did in our previous lesson. So what type of account is cash? Something you own. That would be an asset. So let's go through each of these steps individually. So $50,000. What account is being affected? Cash. Is the account going up or down? Yeah, it's going up. We're receiving cash as the company. Remember, we're doing everything from the company's perspective, so cash is going up. What type of account is that? Um, that would be an asset, just like we did previously. So let's apply all these first three to answer number four. Cash is an asset that is going up. So would that be a debit or a credit? That would be a debit to cash. So for that first transaction, cash is being increased or debited by $50,000. Okay, now let's look at the second part of this. Christopher Knowles started CK Company by transferring 50,000 from his personal bank account to a business account. So this is the owner's interest. It's his capital in CK Company. So our capital account, CK Capital, is also being affected. Now, is that account going up or down? Well, does he have more interest or less interest than before? He has more interest, so it is going up. How do we, what type of account is that capital? Account, it's a capital account, nice and easy. And would that be a debit or a credit? Well, it's a capital account and it's going up, so that would be a credit on the right. So let's go to CK Capital and let's record that 50,000 on the right. Now let's move on to this next one. We'll take it a little bit slower this time. Now the company purchased $2,000 in supplies on accounts. So let's start with that first one. Let's pick out an account that's being affected. So the, the company purchased supplies. So supplies are being affected. So there's our account. Are supplies going up or down? Well, we purchased supplies. So we have more supplies than before. So they're going up. Here, let's even take this a step further. Let's actually answer them as we go. 
What type of account are supplies? Well, supplies, they're something we own. So what type of account would that be? That would be an asset. So we know that we have supplies, which are an asset going up. So now let's figure out if that's a debit or credit. We have an asset that is going up. That would be a debit. And now remember, would debits be on the left or the right? Debits always on the left. So we have $2,000 in supplies. Now let's do the same thing for the second half of that. What account is being affected? Well, how did we pay for these supplies? Are we paying now or are we paying later? We're paying on accounts, so we're paying later. That would be accounts payable. Accounts payable, the amount we owe, is that amount that we owe going up or down? It's going up. There's an increase there. What type of account is accounts payable? Accounts payable, something we owe, that would be a liability. So let's go ahead and put that in. And how do we make a liability go up? Liability, increase, capital, or sorry, <laughs> credit. So let's credit that liability account. So let's find our accounts payable and let's credit. Remember, debit's on the left, credit's on the right. So we're going to credit it for that $2,000. Okay, now let's look at our next one. The company paid $3,000 for rent for the month of January. So let's look at that keyword first. We see paid. Remember, it doesn't quite matter at this point um, which account you recognize first. The order of your debits and credits will matter a little bit in journal entries, but it really doesn't matter which actual account you identify. So if you find a keyword, go ahead and grab onto that. Start analyzing that and see what you can do with it. And then maybe you'll be able to fill in the other blank as you go. So the company paid. $3,000 for rent, so paid. Remember, paid means that we have cash. That is going down. Now, what type of account is cash? We should be pretty familiar with this one by now. It's an asset. And would that be a debit or a credit? That would be a asset down credit. So let's go ahead and find that credit. Let's put it on there for now. And we paid $3,000. Now let's look at the other half of this. The company paid $3,000 for rent for the current month. So here we have rent expense. So we have rent expense. And let's go ahead and try to run through these quickly. Is the account going up or down? Well, do we have more expense or less expense than before? We have more expense. Remember, don't get this confused with those revenue and expense rules for capital when we were doing our uh, basic accounting equation. We are analyzing each individual account type. So do we have more or less expenses? We have more expense than before. Our expenses went up. So actually, let me go ahead and write these in just to keep it clear. Rent expense, it's going up. And what type of account is rent expense? It is an expense account. So how do we make an expense account go up? We debit. So let's go ahead and add that $3,000 under rent expense. So, so far you're noticing that basically, and here's a really great rule in accounting, for every single transaction, one debit will be affected and one credit will be affected. You can see this for each one. The one we just did, debit rent expense, credit cash. And it works on the basic accounting equation. It works when you're doing your T accounts. There's always these little rules that you can use to make sure you're on the right track. So let's keep practicing. Let's take a look at the next one. Paid one year of insurance in advance. Now here's that key word. I always like to jump right there. Paid cash. So cash is being affected. It is going down. It is an asset. How do we make an asset go down? We credit it. So let's go ahead and credit our cash for 6,000, effectively decreasing it. And let's look at the other account that's being affected here. Paid one year of insurance in advance. So remember, this is a prepaid, prepaid insurance. So what account is being affected? Prepaid insurance. Is the account going up or down? Well, do we have more prepaid insurance or less prepaid insurance? We have more, we just bought it. So it's going up. What type of account is that account? It's a asset because we have a future economic benefit. 
So how do we increase an asset? We debit. So let's go ahead and debit that 6,000. Now remember, as we go through these, try pausing it and see if you can answer the questions on your own before we run through it. You might find that you're learning this a lot faster than you previously imagined you would. So let's try the 15th. The company made 5,000 in cash sales. So 5,000 in cash sales. What account is being affected? Cash. Is the account going up or down? It's going up, we're receiving cash. Now what type of account is that account? It's an asset, so how do we increase an asset? We debit. So let's go ahead and debit that cash account for the $5,000. And the second part of that, sales. Remember, we sold some services, so we get to record some fees earned. So what accounts are being affected? Fees earned. Is the account going up or down? Do we have more revenues or less? We have more, it's going up. What type of account is fees earned? It is a revenue account. So how do we make a revenue account go up? We credit. 5,000, there we go. We see we have one debit and one credit for that one. Now on the 21st, the company paid. Let's stop right there and let's play with that paid. Paid what? Cash. If we're paying cash, is it going up or down? It is going down. What type of account is that account? It's an asset. So how do we make an asset go down? We credit. So let's go ahead and credit cash for 2,000. And what are we doing? We're paying something off. We are paying off the one from January 3rd, which was on account, so we are decreasing the amount we owe. That would be accounts payable. So accounts payable is being affected. Is the account going up or down? It's going down. We're paying off the amount we owe, so we don't owe as much as we did previously. What type of account is it? It is a liability. And how do we decrease the liability? We debit. Let's go ahead and decrease that liability by debiting it for 2000 Okay, now let's move on to the next one. CK Company recorded $1,500 of services provided on account. So let's pick up a few things here. We see services provided. So remember that loose definition, earned. Um, so what did we earn? We earned some revenue. So we have our fees earned here. So what account's being affected? Fees earned. Do we have more fees earned or less fees earned than we did before? We have more. We provided services, so our revenue is increasing. What type of account is that? That's a revenue account. How do we increase a revenue account? We credit it. So let's go ahead and increase that by the amount that they earned, 1500 Okay. And then we have one more piece to the 25th. We provided services on account, so are we getting paid now or later? They're going to pay us later. That's that accounts receivable. So do we have more receivable or less? We have more. They have to pay us more money in the future. We provided a service. Our accounts receivable, the amount that we are going to receive later is increasing. What type of account is that account? It is an asset. So how do we increase an asset? We debit. And now for that last one, the company made 3,000 in cash sales from January 16th through January 31st. The company made 3,000 in cash. So cash is increasing, it's an asset. Let's increase that asset. And cash sales, so let's skip right ahead. Eventually you're going to get really comfortable with just putting these on. Now that we have all this information, let's find some balances. Let's talk about actually making, finding the ending balance for each of these. So let's see, so here we have 50,000, 5,000, 3,000. So we have 58,000 in debits, and we have 3,000, 6,000, 2,000, 11,000 in credits. So which side is bigger, our debit side or our credit side? Our debit side. So that means that we can find the ending balance in cash to be the difference between the two, 47,000. Now these already have all of their balances. We can do this one right here zero, and we can also do this one right here. We only have it on one side, so nothing to offset it. Add them all up, 9,500. So those are the basics of T accounts. The next step to under understanding how to analyze business transactions to get to how to actually record those journal entries. Go ahead and keep practicing those, and the next thing we'll tackle will be journal entries. So we'll see you soon, and happy studying.